I'm going to go over some of the same stuff. Um, this is a portion of the show where we kind of dumb it down a little bit, right? So you could see some great speakers speak before and talking about the science and where things are going. Um, I want to try to talk about practically and pragmatically where we think we are today and try to bring solutions out today to address healthcare costs today. Um, we know we're approaching, what, three and a half trillion dollars in healthcare spend. We're going to go up to potentially five trillion dollars, you know, here by 2025, 2026, our GDP is going to get to about 22 percent or more. That's unsustainable. So we've got to do things today to try to engage people why this great science comes along. And I'll kind of explain to you where I think things are going. And you saw on the hype scale, you know, connected home is at the top of the hype scale from that. So it has been fairly well hyped over the last, you know, 10, 12, 15 years. And I hope I don't contribute to that, but I probably will. Um, part of this, uh, as I show up in front, we start discussing what we're trying to do, and I'll craft this around where artificial intelligence kind of contributes to it as well. You know, is you, know, you see the ring doorbell kind of, you know, coming up right now. You see Alexa going into the home. You see, see things, those are platforms that are going around the home and connecting to potentially hundreds of devices that are out there. Well, in the future, we're probably going to need things that are around the body or the person as well. And in, in general, it can't just be a wearable that you're going to wear out there. I mean, millennials, I don't think, even like to wear wearables anymore. Seniors kind of do, right, from that. But they've got to be ingrained in how they're ingrained in stuff, ingrained into your watch, potentially. It's not a separate device that's out there. And we'll talk a little bit about that. So the market trends I've kind of been seeing, you know, that out there is that we see all these movements and acquisitions that are going to occur. I, I kind of use this hump, you know, of care, and you've seen Fitbit over on the left-hand side and Samsung and some of the other uh, wearables companies that have been out there for years creating devices, selling millions of them, but influencing very little on healthcare. Um, and then the other side is the complex care side, the five percent that consumes fifty percent of healthcare little patients that are over there, but a lot of spend over there as well. Where we see a lot of people moving to is just over the chronic side into the newly chronic, retired chronic, and trying to stop people from spending money, right, that's out there. And there's not a lot of money being spent there quite yet. It could be somebody that's pre-diabetic. It could be somebody that is hypertensive. You don't want to get those disease states exacerbated. You want to catch them now before they get to a high risk or more complex risk. So how do you do that if not a lot of money is being spent over there quite yet? You can't give everybody a laptop to try to keep them out of the hospital. It's quite of an art to try to do that. The other thing we kind of see too, and I, I said this is also going to be kind of be like a Gallagher show as well. So I'm going to fire hose you with a lot of information. So anybody in the front seat is going to get wet. And to the millennials, ask somebody next to you that understands who Gallagher is, because I don't even think he's around anymore, is he? From that standpoint. Um, but on this, you know, there's converging trillion dollar markets that are out there. Like you just saw CVS acquire Aetna, you know, Walmart acquiring you know, Humana. I'm just guessing that Amazon's in the market, they'll probably acquire CVS and Aetna, right? Will Google and Apple acquire, you know, Walmart and Humana? Will McKesson acquire Walgreens? And why would they do that from bringing in tech, retail, and healthcare? You know, and actually large populations, face-to-face, -face, and distribution. You'll start seeing these type of uh, mergers and acquisitions and convergence occurring to try to scale to get into that broader population that's out there. The more of the population's out there, not just the 5% that consume 50% of healthcare. So we know that we're actually going through and, you know, 10,000 people per day are turning 65. We know that people want to consume things differently now, so now you're seeing you know, the Bombas box, or you're seeing Dollar Shave Club, or you're seeing, you know, Hello Fresh and things. People want what they want when they want it. And they also want to consume healthcare differently as well. So where's the AI part of this coming in? I'll talk to you about that in just a second. But, you know, there are things that we're seeing the pharma, the, you know, the pharmacy is now converging. If you know, you know, the pharmacy space, providers are going to have, you know, pharmacy are going to have provider status as of 2019. Uh, there's a lot of different things that are going to start converging. Rapid diagnostics, I mean, you know rapid diagnostics as glucose, right, and it's on the shelf. But what about creatinine levels? What about BNP levels? What about troponin levels? What about GFR levels that are used in dialysis and congestive heart failure? That will start going to the shelf as well, and it needs a transport layer 
to get to the cloud to be, you know, to be um, intervened on, right, from that standpoint. You might see the episodic rapid diagnostics like influenza or A1C or HIV, they have the pharmacist doing that. He shouldn't be counting, he or she shouldn't be counting pills. They should be doing other things in care. And also, you know, 90% of people don't want to be in, oh, sorry, it actually didn't, the slide didn't work right, but I'll do it anyway. 90% of people uh, don't want to be in the hospital, they want to be at home. 90% of people can't afford assisted living that's out there. So, and the other part of it is when I talk to CEO of health systems and independent living, are you going to be building more brick and mortars in the future? Or do you consider the home an extension of your system? They're saying, yes, I do. But I don't know what I'm doing 10 weeks from now. I don't know what I'm doing 10 months from now. So we got to solve the problem. So when we look at this, we look at machine learning and AI and everything else from, from the standpoint, we have a system called Personalize. We want to look at it from a couple different ways. And this is truly just really around engagement. And engagement from the standpoint that I want to put out solutions, and there's multiple different solutions, out of thousands of solutions to be able to do this. Some are very disparate, maybe just doing glucose readings, and others may be more holistic. But the big thing that the AI systems need, the machine learning systems need out there, is they need to have data. And they need to have data from the home. And they need to be able to do it economically and align it. You're not going to go out with a congestive heart failure patient and give them a Fitbit and go through and say, here, I'm going to keep you out of the hospital, because that's probably not going to work. You're not going to go through and take somebody that's not going to the hospital and give them a laptop to try and keep them out because it doesn't align. You've got to align the right technology, the right solutions to be able to make the right economics work for the right outcome to get that data. And the other thing is knowing your populations too. Now we trend, tend to, this is going through and saying, All right, at 70, are you old? Well, it really depends on your mindset. It really depends on your activity level. It really depends on your disease state, right, as well. I mean, are you active or are you not in this, you know, from that standpoint? And then the other part of it is, you know, people are determining that that data that comes in also has to be smart data now. It could be when my second company, I did an IoT of healthcare and sold it to a publicly traded company. It could be a COPD reading came in, and you went to the analytics or into the clinical system, said, oh my God, they didn't take their medication. We need to get them to take their medication and pee on the hospital. I got golf claps for doing that. But now it is, has to be smarter. It has to be, when that COPD reading comes in, it has to go through and say, what was the pollution level outside? What was the temperature on the wall? Did they dip into 211 and their, their electricity has been turned off from that? What was their re regional status? What was their economic status? What was their social status that was out there? We'd look at social, behavioral, and then, you know, physiological in that order. So with this client, it comes with se severe COP reading. Maybe it's just I need to pay for their electricity bill instead of going through and giving them more medication and their medication to try to keep them out of the hospital. It's an economic thing of a $200 bill versus $10,000 for an emergency room visit. So there's a lot more that, these, that has to come in that's smart. So where does AI come in for us uh, from this perspective is how do we engage people? How do we engage the cohort? When we look at this, we kind of talk about it and go, there's two models. I am human and I am me. I compare me to the human population and go, okay, well, you've been doing take, great taking your medication. So I'm going to give you a gym membership, a silver sneakers membership. But if you only walk 300 steps a day, does that incent you? Maybe what incents me is a Netflix subscription to be able to do that. So you've got to align incentives and rewards with you, what incents you to be able to do this. And the one thing I do know is I talked about thousands of disparate solutions that are out there. This is what's facing our senior population on a regular basis and continue to do this. And we can't do this. Otherwise, it's not going to get used. I mean, we're bringing alarm systems, and we're bringing Alexa into the home, and we're bringing smart TVs in the home. I mean, I don't want it, right, from that standpoint as well. As well. So, you know, some of the target markets that we go after, which makes sense, and I thought I'd just throw this in really quickly, are people that are financially responsible for the patient. So why are you starting to see this market take off again? My, my previous company was out there 10, 12 years ago. We were aligned with Google and, 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 and Microsoft and Qualcomm and Cleveland Clinic and everybody else. Everybody wanted this market to emerge, but the problem that didn't occur was incentives weren't there yet. The payment model, the risk model wasn't there yet. We were still at fixed fee when we needed to go to value-based care. Now that that's starting to occur, you know, I think Amazon said the other day that they're willing to spend $500 billion, a half a trillion dollars, on actually putting new healthcare initiatives out there 
paying a doctor $500,000 a year. You don't have to be worried about being on call. You can just do your business, and Amazon will take the risk on the population. They'll go through and make sure the risk is there so the doctor doesn't have to do that. So you take the anxiety down and give the doctor back what they want. So aligning with the organizations that actually have you know, a need in the marketplace. Why am I, why am I aligned with AMR Ambulance as one of our customers? Because they see 70% of the ambulance rides are not necessary. They say 70% of the ER visits are not necessary. They have 62 call centers they have in 50 states and they're licensed. They need to start going this direction to the home. They need to do fast response team. Every once in a while, I'll say it, I'm on stage. Every once in a while I get a bout of AFib and it happens on sa Saturday morning. Where do I go? The emergency room. Under an EMR thing, I call my United Healthcare number and they come to me if I had to do that instead. So it's new models of care. And so the big thing, my responsibility in all this is big data, because I can say this to your room because you're grown-ups and this is what you want, and user engagement as well. That's what I want to drive. I want to integrate into the back-end clinical systems. I want to align the right technology. And I want to be able to engage the population to be able to get that technology as well on a common platform that allows us to plug in all these digital solutions and be able to deliver them to our customer base without having to go through and have Banner interface to a thousand different digital health solutions. They don't even know potentially which ones work and which ones don't work, right? So we want to do that you know, on a common platform. And as I talked about before, making that data smart as it goes to that platform as well. Do the heavy lifting you know, for the, the organizations that are out there that all they really want to do, I mean, I'm going to tell you back on this one really quickly. You know, Mark, I'll use an example. But Banner doesn't even really care if it's a Livongo or a Gluco or a Philips or whatever. They just need glucose data. They just need blood pressure data. <clears throat> they just need it economically collected and put it in the back of their clinical system. And so that's why we start building platforms that are out there to put that layer in between and let the economics work so they don't have to worry about themselves. Otherwise, it potentially is not going to get done. <coughs> so we talked about e-trends and e-subscribing. One of the other things we're doing, and I can talk about this, this is a project with McKesson, to be able to go through and from nursing home to home, being able to release you know, a patient from the nursing home, and in that already has the medications, the supplies, or the e-devices. What I want to do is I want to stop the Bermuda Triangle. I want to stop going from home to hospital to nursing home to home. I want to put the care delivery in the system allows for them to get what they want just in time care with the supplies they need connected do exception based processing and go through and say you know Kent looks okay he looks like he's stabilized today you know so we're just going to deal with the deltas and the people that that aren't looking okay from a data perspective that's out there as well but give them their supplies on a regular basis so that's why we created you know a digital therapeutic platform a digital health platform which allows us to have multiple different solutions out there because one solution doesn't fit all to try to engage patients and try to get that data so that our customers can feed it into their clinical backend systems, their AI systems, and try to address the patients that really, really need to have the services in a broader approach. We all know call centers cost a lot of money. We also know that a nurse going to a home costs a lot of money as well. Wouldn't it be better to have the data in advance to be able to know who you need to go to next, who that frequent flyer is going to be that's going to enter that emergency room? And that's what we want to do is to try to collect that data and that engagement on a regular basis. Now, I know I'm going to run short here really quickly on my speech, but um, you know, one of the things that we're creating is what we call a carable, right? Nobody wanted to talk about wearables, but it's carable. But it addresses in healthcare. It allows us to be able to go through and connect to biometric devices or medication reminders. It's just icon-driven. It is for mainly the senior population that's out there. But one of the bigger things it does is as these microarrays, as the amino assays, as these biochips, as these rapid diagnostics get done, and they go on the shelf at like a Walgreens or CVS or Walmart, they're going to need a delivery system to go to the cloud. So we have near field on this band that allows you to just basically take that GFR level or the troponin level and take a blood sample at home. Let's just take BNP level for congestive heart failure. Take a blood sample take it, touch it to the band, throw the, the, the diagnostic away and have the data go to the cloud, and then go through the analytic system and the AI system to go through and say, Ken looks normal, his GFR is in the right range, you know, he's moving more or less after he, he took his medication of the day, he's socially engaged. Little tiny bits of data to drive across a bigger population 
so we don't have to deploy massive amounts of equipment out there because that's when you start blowing out the economics that are out there as well. That's why the drug chains are starting to embrace us because we start bringing them alive. And, and by the way, people are going, well, why does Walmart, why, why does Walmart want to be able to have you know, this, this band in the store for you? I mean, is somebody going to go to the shelf and buy it? Walmart is now going to be responsible for a population of patients. Is McDonald's going to be in the front of Walmart anymore? Or is Subway going to be there? Because now they want their membership that's coming through the front door to eat healthy. They're now financially responsible for them, just like CVS is, right, as well. So they need to look for solutions that are sitting on their shelf that brings the stores together to make the whole ecosystem kind of work. I'm not going to go into all the aspects of it. We are seeing an, an emerging side of this. We look at AI and IoT and <coughs> sorry, blockchain and VR and AR. You are seeing predominantly needed in the healthcare space. I mean, that's one of the laggards where it's not being utilized, but that's one of the biggest trends where you're starting to see it. I start, I don't, I shouldn't have that in there. Um, but there was, um, there was, that was the patient full stack that I talked about. But the patient full stack means, you know, a lot of us in this industry have been going through and delivering individual solutions to the marketplace. So we show up at, <coughs> at Banner and basically say, here's our solution to be able to go get data. You, you go deploy it. You go implement it. And you go align it with the right patient cohort. You can't do that. Patient st uh, full stack is, it is integration of the clinical backend system, it's services, it's solutions, it is devices, it's deployment, but it's driven at the top by intelligence. It's got to be driven at the top so that somebody that's paying for this can put a dollar in at the top of the stack and influence an outcome at the bottom. You can't approach you know, the, the marketplace with a disparate solution and go, here, what would you do with it? It's got to be fully integrated or else you're not going to get very far with that. And that's why I think the beauty of our platform does that's out there as well. So I showed you a little bit about what's in the box, you know, from the subscription. This is, this is going to go very, very well, right? From now starting getting monthly subscription out there and it has an app behind it that brings together not only ordering supplies, but also reconciliation, but e-devices with it, feeding into the electronic health record. It kind of brings it all together for the family and for the patient as well. Um, I'm not going to go into it, but this is our whole portfolio of stuff that we put together. One thing I'm only going to emphasize on this, if you know this market space very well, there's a lot of heavy solutions out there of that consuming on that 5% that consume 50%. And maybe I should have, have talked about those solutions are putting scales and blood pressure and pulse oxes out and going through a hub and going in the back end system. That market is slowly dying. And the reason why the market is slowly dying because it's just too heavy of a model to be able to implement, to be able to deploy and get these devices back, clean them up, <coughs> and try to get them out to a patient. So it mean, it's dying in the broader market. It's still very useful in the 5% that consume 50%. But if you want to get into the middle of that hump, you better have stuff that's disposable, transparent, light, data-driven. So when I send you from the hospital with congestive heart failure, here's a band that doesn't cost much, or I send you home with a biologic or especially pharma, like here's your dose of chemotherapy. Did you take it? Are you moving more or less after you took it? Are you socially engaged? Did you get to your first appointment? Little tiny things like that to be able to implement with people instead of very, very heavy and thick solutions. So thank you. I know I went over my time, but I appreciate it.